In this video, I'll be continuing my Troaria Inferno Mode Scanner journey as we enter the later stages of Hard Mode. Will I be able to survive the insanity of Calamity Inferno second half of Hard Mode? Find out more in this video. Before we start, only 15% of you guys are actually subscribed to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and help me get to 250k subs before the end of the year. Enjoy! We start off by crafting a sniper scope using the loot we got from the fitting golem and talking to the steampunker NPC to purchase a steampunk wings. Then we have to craft some diving gears as now we must dive deep down the sulfur sea to enter the dark depths of the abyss. We blow up the abyss using boom shurikens, as we need to get to the second layer of the abyss to mine down these korea ores which glow in the dark and are only mineable using post golem pickaxe. Also touching these korea ores will burn the living hell out of you, so good luck. I turned the ores into bars and crafted a hellstorm. This gun fires two bullets at once and deals damage to enemies on contact. I don't know if touching enemies with the tip of a gun could be practical, but it's okay. I crafted the hydrothermic armor set along with the wings. We are steaming hot and ready to go. I went to the underground jungle and farmed down the enemies there to obtain some plague cell canisters. Using those, I crafted the abomination and alchemical flask, a really good accessory to help us for our next boss. I bought nanites from the cyborg NPC and used it to craft the plague reaper armor set. The armor is good, but the set bonus makes us blind. Motherfucker, I can't see. So yeah, maybe hydrothermic is better. I went to the dungeon and used a jungle key to get the piranha gun. I crafted some perennial bars and life alloy. Then I turned the piranha gun into a gun called the barracuda gun. This gun shoots a barracuda fish that sticks and latches to enemies. I am curious, does any of you even use the piranha gun in your playthrough? I also crafted the godly gator, but the damage kinda sucks so we won't be using it. I bought the Martian Distress Remote and started the Martian Invasion. The enemies in the invasions are perfectly fine and they pose no threat. Until you encounter the Martian saucers, they just straight up one-shot you. Luckily, my experience us was able to beat them up. I got this funny gun that can change enemy sizes, but I won't be using it. It's hard to explain, watch my video on it if you're curious. I crafted the Art Nova Diffuser. It charges and fires a rapid burst of Nova Bolt. The first charging stage increases the fire rate of the burst. The second replaces the rapid burst with a Nova Blast. It is a very cool weapon. Then I went to the underground jungle and used the Abomination to summon Plaguebringer Goliath. Because we are using the arena we used to fight Plantera, it simply isn't big enough, leading me unsuccessful in my first attempt. So I made another arena by clearing a huge chunk of the underground jungle. Then we can now fight the Plaguebringer Goliath again. Plaguebringer Goliath behaves similarly like Queen B. Their attack patterns are alike, such as charging at the player, but instead of shooting bees, it shoots down plague missiles. While the concept of this boss might be simple, the fight isn't as easy as you think, as Plaguebringer is extremely fast. One wrong move and you'd be overwhelmed instantly with his speed. On one of his attacks, he summons these green laser lines. At first, I did not know what to do and how to dodge it, so I just accepted my fate and died. Turns out, you gotta destroy the drones that shoot the lasers and you gotta do it fast. So I had to switch from my Ark Nova Diffuser to my Hellstorm. The main problem during this fight is once you shoot with Ark Nova Diffuser, you are stuck in the attack animation for a while. Meaning, this weapon is an embodiment of high risk, high reward in the fight against Goliath. A lot of my deaths were caused by this alone. But yeah, on some parts of the fight, I just straight up used my Hellstorm. It is a much safer option. I also tried using the Barracuda gun. It was horrible for my personal experience. Well, yes, I did die a lot. But I think I did a great job dodging most of these boss attacks. On Goliath's later phases, his attacks becomes much more dangerous. In one of his phases, I shoot you not, he's able to shoot a whole as nuke to destroy your body and burn your eyes. That was very unexpected. Turns out you gotta destroy the mini plague bringer he summons before they're able to shoot out the insta-kill nuke blast, making rapid fire homing weapons a much preferred option. On low health, Goliath enters desperation phase. He basically becomes enraged and will start showering you with tons of plague missiles. The plague missiles aren't hard to dodge, however, it does really make dodging Goliath's dashes significantly harder. The main problem I faced was destroying the plague seekers before they're able to shoot out the nuclear missile. I have to destroy them in time or else we'll get our face obliterated by the nuke blast again. But aside from the mini seekers, there isn't really much of a problem. I find going around in circles to be really helpful in dodging the plague missile rain. And just like Gojo in Jujutsu Kaisen, Plague Bringer died and off screen that. I wish I got a better footage of him dying, but it do be like that sometimes. I open the treasure bag and use the infected armor platings to craft a plague tainted SMG. Its left click is useless, don't use it. But its right click on the other hand is insane. Which begs the question, is this thing still considered a gun? It has SMG in its name, which means submachine gun. But at the same time, it is capable of shooting rockets. But you know what? Who cares? It looks cool, so I'ma use it. I bought some truffle worm from the Sea King NPC. Then we went to the ocean to fish and summon our next boss, Duke Fishron. We are going to be using our plague tainted SMG against this haram pig abomination. 
And yeah, this gun absolutely shreds dogfish run bubbles way too easily. It literally becomes as fragile as a real life bubble. Whereas most weapons in general struggle to do so. Not just the bubbles, this explosive AOE capabilities and homing properties renders most of dogfish runs that list attacks and summons useless. Which means you'll only have to focus on dodging dog dashes and water tornadoes. Due to how powerful this weapon is, I only died once to dogfish run. Hey, that's an improvement. I did not even do a great job dodging Dukefish Run's dashes. But due to an absolute massacre this is, we did just fine beating Dukefish Run in under a minute. I opened the treasure bag and got a shrimpy truffle mount. Then I beat couple more Dukefish Run so I could get the Fish Run wings. The Fish Run wings are basically essential for mobility. We went back home and crafted a dead whistle and used it to summon Ravager. At this state of the boss, I genuinely think Ravager is the most messy and worst boss in the entire Calamity mod. I know I've said Ausurum Aureus is bad, but Ravager is really significantly worse. The boss design is confusing with unclear direction on what the devs are going for. Not to mention unfitting bullet hell concept. Luckily, I think the devs are working on a rework. Regardless, I did not bother much in dodging Ravager's attacks, as our Plague Tainted SMG is way too good. It is so good that it made it very much possible to brute force our way through Ravager. Ravager drops flashy geodes, which makes obtaining Calamity Core materials less of a fuss. We also got the Realm Ravager gun, which is kinda bad. Then I went to the Hallowed Biome to farm some enemies and use the points to buy prismatic lace wings. I wanted to get a cinematic shot of me summoning Empress of Light, but a stupid jellyfish shot at me, turning a beautiful summoning ritual into a jump scare. And as you can see, that jump scare really ruined my tempo. Due to me being unprepared, I died. Thank you jellyfish, very cool. We summoned the Empress of Light again, and damn, she looks magnificent. Empress of Light is definitely the second most gorgeous boss in Inferno mod. Or maybe third, you'll see more gorgeous bosses later. While she does look beautiful, her damage numbers are dangerous. A monster girl that is both beautiful and dangerous. Damn, a woman of my dreams. God forbids me for being in less than 50 meters proximity near Empress of Light. Yes, I'm fighting her during the night, and no, I'm not gonna fight her daytime form. Daytime Empress doesn't insta-kill you, but she deals double the damage. I am not messing with that. But I was expecting Empress of Light to be really hard, but you know what, it actually felt solid and fun. The bullet hells are actually manageable. Well, I'm a ranger with a powerful weapon that can home, meaning I could keep a safe distance most of the time without the need to aim. So maybe my opinion is a bit biased here. Don't worry, I said all that, but I'm only human, I still died a ton. Come on, it's Empress of Light, it's fine if I die that much. Fighting Inferno Empress feels like you're in a light show. She looks overwhelming at first, but once you fight her like 10 times, you'll get used to the patterns. You can definitely see how important a good wings are for Empress, as you need to maneuver a ton in this fight. That's why I got the fish run wings earlier. When you quote unquote defeat her, she doesn't instantly die. She instead transforms into the fucking moon, blasting you with lunar risers and a huge hyper beam straight up from Pokemon to obliterate your asshole. This hyper beam phase really is the cherry on top of the cake. Empress of Light never fails to make me excited. You just got a circle around the hyper beam and pray it won't accelerate out of nowhere and hit you. When you thought the fight is about to end, nope, it is not yet over. She has her last desperation phase, where she becomes enraged and starts to shoot out every attack that she had released before. Unlike other Inferno bosses, her desperation phase isn't that hard. Maybe because I got pretty used to her attack patterns before. And there we go, we have defeated the magnificent Empress of Light. What a beautiful and glorious death animation. We opened the treasure bag and got a soaring insignia, which will help to increase our flight mobility. Then we immediately went straight to the dungeon to fight the lunatic cultist. There is no time to waste, let's make it fast. The cultists shouldn't be that hard, right? They were always a joke boss in vanilla. My overconfidence will be the end of me. As cultists homing stardust as penetrator beams live up to their name. While waiting for the cultists to respawn, I made a flat arena. I bought the Eternia crystal from the tavern keep NPC. Then I summoned the old one's army. As expected, old one's army wasn't even hard in the slightest. We we absolutely obliterated the enemies and mini bosses wave by wave without facing a single challenge. Until we encountered the final wave, where we meet the flame dragon Betsy. Not gonna lie, I was overwhelmed, because we are tasked to protect the crystal, but to also to protect ourselves from dying from all these flame dragon's attacks. I don't think the devs made any changes to Betsy though. I'm just naturally that bad. I thought it's all over when I died, but weirdly enough, the event did not stop and I could continue it when I respawn. So I rush over to the arena and finish Betsy. Old One's army and Betsy are now fully completed. It is time to fight the cultists once more. Now our ass is much more prepared and ready to dodge the Stardust Penetrator Beams. 
Damn, they're actually putting effort into changing the cultist. That's a lot of respect coming from me, considering how forgettable this boss is. It looks like the cultist put up invisible walls or barriers around him so we can't escape the cultist Oompa Loompa projectile as whooper. It's the best way I can describe it. It seems like the devs are really incorporating the circling around huge laser beam attack into bosses. I almost beat cultist on my second attempt, but his final phase caught me off guard. Let's try to fight the cultist during the night. And you know what? It is right. Cultist attacks look much more beautiful and visually clear during the night. It's almost like they made this boss to be fought during the night. Okay, never mind. I lost my momentum and lost my third attempt. There is this one attack that inflicts trephophobia that looks really cool. And damn, they really enhance the cultist ritual aesthetic of this boss. I've never expected the boring cultist to actually be a cool boss, but here we are, thanks to Infernum. Right at the end, we must face their final desperation phase once more. It's fairly simple, and since I know what will happen, we easily surpass it and defeated the lunatic cultist. Now we get access to Ancient Manipulator Crafting Station. Upon defeating the cultists, the Celestial Pillars will spawn. We first beat the Stardust Pillar, which proved to be quite harder than I expected. With the Stardust Fragments, we crafted the Shroomer Sniper Rifle, a very high DPS single target gun that got nerfed. Then we took down the Vortex Pillar, our main class pillar, and also the easiest pillar out of the four. Using the Vortex Fragments, we could craft the Vortex Popper and Conference Call. Vortex Popper is an upgrade to Senna Popper, but it makes the spread more inaccurate, so using Chlorophyte Bullets is very recommended. And Conference Call is a shotgun that rains down bullets from the sky. An upgrade to Tactical Shotgun. The Solar Pillar is conveniently located on the Astral Infection Biome, which makes the pillar a bit harder, but... While beating down the Solar Pillar, we got a summoning item for both Astrum Deus and Astra Geldon Slime. So that's a bonus. After successfully taking down the Solar Pillar, we must stand in the center of the Astral Tower and use the Titan Heart to summon Astrum Deus. I think it is a bad idea to use Vortex Popper against Astrum Deus. Don't get me wrong, the gun is effective against this boss. However, it destroys our FPS and ears. In one of his attacks, Astrum Deus will use his body to circle himself around you. Stay calm and do not panic. You'll be fine. He's just doing his Genshin Impact Summoning Ritual for Furina. Too bad I hit Heart Pity and lost my fucking 50-50 to C1 Dehya. I quit at Genshin because of this sole reason. Fine, I might be coping. Enough gay shit impis. Back to fighting the other, other space worm boss. Calamity devs do really love worm bosses, huh? In one of Astrum Deus' attacks, he is able to release two big balls, red and blue. They deal a lot of damage. Kinda reminds me of Gojo Hollow Purple. I don't mind being squished by the two big balls though. They look majestic. I had to switch my weapon from my Vortex Popper to my Conference Call, but even with that, my frame rate is still dropping. Conference Call isn't bad either for Astrum Deus, it's actually pretty good, and the experience of fighting Astrum Deus itself is fine. In one of his attacks, he could conjure a black hole. It looks really cool. The boss difficulty is moderately hard, it's really just a sudden frame rate drops. Aside from that issue, it is quite chill. You could say the frame rates are as unstable as the emotion of a hardcore Geometry Dash player. But even with that, we strive through and defeated the Astrum Deus. We opened the bag, but did not get much useful loot aside from the Celestial Fragments. Defeating Astrum Deus allows us to mine these Astral Ores, which can be turned into bars. I used the bars to craft the Astral Blaster, which is a mediocre gun. Now, we must go back to the Astral Infection Biome once more to face Astral Geldon Slime, the true ultimate challenge of Heart Mode, originated from the Calamity Catalyst mod. The boss might look easy at first, but don't worry, we have not gotten to the fun part yet. But even in his first phase, Astral Geldon is not as easy as it looks. I forgot to mention, I had crafted the Spectral Storm Cannon earlier. It's the final upgrade to the Flare Gun. The fact that I struggled and died on Astral Geldon's first phase was a bit embarrassing, considering I made a whole guide on this boss. Astral Geldon's first phase is fairly tame. He slams his slimy gelatinous body multiple times to the ground. Then he shoots star projectiles that go in an accelerating speed, so you can't go too far away from the boss. And he can also orbit damaging star barrier around himself. He could also summon slime minions too. I don't think he does it too often though. They're a bit troublesome if you use a single projectile weapon. All these attack designs make up a good and simple boss. As we've successfully took down the boss, of course it is not yet over. If you think the fight is about to end, you'd be extremely wrong. Because this boss just started, and sadly, you always finish too early. Luckily, you don't have to start all over if you lost the fight. The summoning item starts the fight on his second phase. This really helped. The second phase is way more fun than the first phase. Well, if you consider pain fun. I swear, you modded Terraria players are a fucking masochist. 
The absolute mind-boggling part is they haven't even done finishing up this boss yet. They are changing the background to look even more beautiful in the near future update. It never stops to fascinate me how they never fail to make a beautiful creation even more beautiful. All classes are equal for this boss. No class is harder or easier than the other, except through melee of course. We don't talk about that. Because you are trapped inside this tiny little space arena, and there is no way to escape as you'll quickly die if you're outside the circle. You know, while fighting this boss, I realized the reason why Calamity devs give more damage to ranger when they are closer to enemies is only as a bonus, and to prevent the player from chasing bosses from afar, encouraging the player to fight bosses the way it is intended to be, never as a reason to support or emphasize actual combat scenarios. Get good character development arc perhaps? I don't know, I might be tripping. But that applies to Astragal Don't Slime only, okay? And maybe for a couple other bosses like Providence, which we'll fight later. What I'm trying to say is they are well-designed bosses, reflected by how the power level of all classes are equal against them. I say all this while I'm getting my ass whooped live on camera by the fat space slime. The ass whooping simply never stops and you're not given a single moment to catch a breath. Obviously, Astragal Don is not a boss you simply beat at the first try. You really need to take your time, you gotta slow down and learn the attack patterns. The more we take it calm and slowly, the better chances we get to fully defeat this boss. We don't have to worry about the fly time either, as the fight gives us infinite flight. Moving erratically will not help us either. Trust me, I tried doing it. But the only thing awaiting us is another bullet hell being slapped towards our face. There is even this one spiraling laser attack that forces you to really move in with the rhythm or you could call it the pace of Astragaldon. This is why I think Astragaldon is peak, and I really can't wait for more super bosses like this guy to be added in the future. If you're a ranger, Spectral Storm Cannon is really good. There is no use of using a super high DPS weapon, because the way Astragaldon is designed, the devs put up a damage cap on this boss so you can't one-shot it, forcing the players to slowly fight this boss. So yeah, a consistent homing weapon like Spectral Storm Cannon helps a ton. After dodging all the cosmic bullet hell shenanigans, Astragaldon will self improve and enter its final phase as an act of desperation. He will start to rain huge meteor balls indicated by lines as the arena gradually gets smaller and smaller. It's not too hard to dodge them, but your head might be slightly shaky from the PTSD we got from being slaughtered by the fat space slime. And there we go, after a lot of grueling torture, we've successfully defeated the Astragaldon slime. We opened the treasure bag and got some spicy loot, like this hook that is an upgrade to Dissonance hook, and an accessory that transforms us into a fast-moving space sphere. By defeating Astragaldon, we allow Metanova ores to spawn in our world. They're located below the astral infection biome. These metanova ores can be used to craft insanely powerful gears. I used the ores to craft the intergalactic ranger armor set. On that night, I summon and beat down the slime god, so they can drop the overloaded blaster. You can already start to notice how powerful the armor is. Then we use the metanova ores to upgrade it to the astragal gun. Words cannot describe how powerful our current state is. This gun has a right click function too, where the blast pierces enemies infinitely. Did I mention? This ores allows us access to craft post providence weapons. Yes, they fucking do. I crafted the Aurali sniper rifle, but I don't think I will be using this sniper rifle too much. It is simply way too powerful, that is no fun. On the next day, I went to fight a sandstorm in the desert biome, and I used the points to buy forbidden fragments. With this, I can craft the sandstorm score. Remember the altar place we've run into on pre-hard mode? Yeah, we can use the sandstorm score there to enter the desert dimension, just like entering nether dimension in Minecraft for the first time as a kid. It's fairly empty and hollow here though, as the only thing awaiting us is our next boss, Argus the Bereft Fasal. And yep, our gears absolutely obliterate this boss. Argus can summon and ride the Great Sand Shark, but not even that could save him from the ass-whooping of our Metanova gear. I highly recommend you guys to see and experience the boss fight firsthand by yourselves, because this is just unfair. It's such a shame I wanted to show you guys how cool this boss is, but ended up obliterating this boss in under like a minute. I swear, if you guys fight this boss normally, it is much more challenging. But yeah, without even trying much, we successfully defeated Argus on our first try. What's ironic is the loot Argus drops are actually very useful, especially this accessory that gives us damage reduction barrier. We proceed to leave the dimension and went to the last celestial pillar, which is the Nebula Pillar. Nebula is the most useless pillar for us because there is no ranger weapons or materials that we need to craft using Nebula fragments. Look at how fast we obliterate the pillar using our current gear. Very nice. After destroying the pillar, I quickly use my magic mirror before I get jumpscared by none other than the Space Eldritch Tentacle Abomination, also known as Moon Lord. Normally, Moon Lord would be the ultimate final challenge of hard mode, but oh boy, now it is more like a walk in the park if anything. While Infernum did definitely make the fight more challenging, especially with trapping you inside this box similar like Supreme Calamitas, I feel like the defense of our Metanova gears and our current damage capabilities absolutely ignores all of it. Well, maybe not all. I still died on my first try because I was a bit too overconfident. I crafted a Celestial Sigil to summon the Moon Lord again. Calling this offer prepared would be an understatement. To be fair, we did successfully defeat possibly one of the hardest boss in the whole modded Terraria scene. So maybe us being a tad bit overpowered now is perfectly balanced. 
and I absolutely adore the black hole attack in particular. It is very menacing and huge. The devs really gave Moonlord the proper treatment. After a short while, we successfully defeated Moonlord and turned his tentacles into sushi. By defeating Moonlord, we get access to Luminite Bars. We also got the Celestial Starboard Wings, the best wings in Vanilla Terraria. I crafted a Celestial Tear Pickaxe. I upgraded my boots into the Celestial Tracers. Yes, they renamed the item. Then I bought a shotgun from the Arms Dealer NPC and a few Dark Shards from the Point Shop mod. So we can craft the Onyx Blaster. But not just yet, we crafted the summoning item for Frost Moon. As we need the Santa NK1 mini boss to spawn and drop us the Chain Gun. He spawns naturally in the later waves. While we're here, might as well defeat the Frost Moon up until wave 15, because why not? Then we combine the Onyx Blaster and Chain Gun to craft Onyx Chain Blaster, my favorite weapon line. I farm down some enemies in the hallowed biome for some unholy essence, which we can use to craft the summoning item for our next boss. Then we went to the Profane Garden biome in the right side of the underworld, where we get a spooky glimpse of Cygnus, a boss that we have to fight later. Because we are not here to fight him, we need to follow the instruction written in this altar. It tells us to use our Profane Shard here to summon none other than the Profane Meatballs. The first phase is a Geometry Dash slash Flappy Bird level, where you have to dodge the fire pillars and reach the end to hit the boss. It's really fun too, and I don't mind it at all. It might be hard for beginners, but I got used to it pretty quickly. Then on the mid-ball second phase, one of them will immediately blast you with a circling hyper beam, while the other shower you with extra missiles and damaging obstacles that gets into the way of you circling. So basically, a main guy doing his attacks while the others assist him in doing so. A pattern you will see often in this fight. Nice Jojo reference by the way. They unleash their best attack on their last phase, where they charge at you, erupt dangerous volcano pillars and blast you with a powerful hyper beam. There are indicators marking the area where you have to dodge. A combination of all the attacks from the previous phases into one perfect dangerous but delicious spicy dish. And a foreshadowing of their master's power in which they worship to gain a tiny fraction of the power of the sun itself. It might not seem like it, but I died a lot to the meatballs. In my opinion, this is the best way the devs can possibly implement the rework to the three meatballs, allowing each meatball to shine on their own with their unique signature attacks without being overshadowed or cluttered by the others. And one thing I gotta say, it is definitely much harder than the original. As the original back then barely offers you any challenge, it's very nice to see the insane improvements over the past few years. It might be due to our current powerful gears, but the fight was done in a much quicker time than I anticipated. The death animation is a nice way to burn the player's eye. Upon defeating them, the gate blocking our way to their master will open. We traverse through this miniature planetarium, an abode which the sun goddess slumbers in. As we've arrived in the arena sector, we must use our profane core to summon none other than the profane goddess, also known as Providence. And yep, the fight rhymes in sync perfectly with the music. It's insanely awesome and you guys need to experience it for yourselves firsthand. I think she is the first ever modded Terraria boss to do this in the history. It's no longer a secret that Providence is my most favorite and number one Calamity boss. No other vanilla or Calamity boss can compete with her. Her attack designs are very fair and balanced, yet challenging in a fun way. In my opinion, Providence is the best and most beginner-friendly way to introduce new players to the way of masochism in modded Terraria. As the fight is very hard, yet still forgiving and rewarding. You can still do mistakes like moving erratically or panicking, but recover from it. While she might be my favorite boss fight, that doesn't mean that I am good at the fight. In fact, I am borderline terrible at it. I died way too much, more than Astragal don't even. And don't even try to fight Nighttime Providence. While she looks much cooler during the night, it is not worth it. Then I discovered I had difficulty with my flight mobility. We simply were not fast enough. At first, I switched to my Celestial Starboard, but that still hasn't fixed our issue yet. While yes, we did become more stable at flying, we also became slower. So I watched an Infernum Providence no-hit video on YouTube, and they use solar flare wings. So let's use that instead. And they were right. Using solar wings definitely fix our issue. It's much more comfortable now to maneuver our flight directions. Also, Providence fight gives us infinite flight. So wings horizontal speed matters more than their flight time. I also realized that our Onyx Chain Blaster that we previously crafted, combined with Luminate Bullets Ammunition, deals more consistent damage than our Astragal Gun. Not to mention, we could also see her attacks more clearly and easier using Onyx Chain Blaster. Maybe the saying was right, simpler is always better. While her first phase is amazing, her second phase is much hotter, and provides even more challenging Bullet Hell Mania for all the players to dodge. 
Before I forget to mention, Providence is one of the very few bosses in the entire modded Terraria area scene to not have any contact damage when you touch them. It might sound weird, but with this feature, the devs are allowed to give Providence more dangerous and creative arsenal of attacks. There is this one attack where Providence drowns basically the whole arena with lava. While the lava's rising, we also have to dodge the concurrent bullet hells. And not just that, once almost the entire arena is filled with lava, she will proceed to shoot out dangerous big damage hyper beams. You have to position yourself really carefully. It is definitely dodgeable, but can easily catch newcomers off guard. Providence can also turn herself into a gemstone creature thing. While in this form, she unlocks her potential to unleash even more bullet hell. Infernum Providence truly tests the limits of your PC power. You would never have thought a small indie pixel 2D game is able to overheat your PC, yet here we are now. Even my quite powerful PC lagged heavily on some parts of the bosses. Modded Terraria truly surpasses expectations once more. After going through countless deaths and a lot of close calls, I locked on, toughened up, and adapted to her bullet hell. Easier said than done. But at the same time, while I did spend like more than 3 or 4 hours fighting this boss, I didn't mind it. Providence has multiple creative varieties of attacks that forces you to adapt differently to each and every single one of them. So yes, while it is kinda a torture, I was having fun. And now, we've successfully defeated Providence the Profane Goddess. That officially seals it. We've officially entered the end game of Calamity, filled with the hardest of challenges and the frenziest of bosses. Will I be able to beat Calamity Infernum once and for all as the gunner class? Please help me get this video to 3000 likes. Thank you for watching and see you in the next and final part of the series.